Okay guys, so you might have joined us now. You learned about low speed pre-ignition and everything you need to know about that. Lake is still with us. And Lake, I had a question for you. Braking oils. Yep. And what makes a braking oil different than a regular oil? And the second question is, how should an engine be broken in? Okay, great question. Thanks, Mike. You know, braking oil is unique. And you know, the thing about a good analogy is, before you put down paint, you typically put down primer. Okay. Braking oil is essentially the primer for your engine mm. before you put down paint. You know, the motor oil is gonna have all the friction reducers, the detergents, the things that keep the engine running properly, but you still have to get the parts to make together. Mm. So before the parts are completely mated, you still need to do some work, and that's what the braking oil is designed to do. So the braking oil will have a completely different chemical balance than a standard oil. It will have no friction modifiers. You don't want to reduce friction because you want the rings to bed in. Mm. So high levels of friction modifiers, synthetics, bad for break-in because it slows down the ring break-in mm -hmm. process. You don't want to go back to LSPI again. You want oil control. Right. So you really want to have good ring break in. You need the cams to break in properly. So the idea of the braking oil is high zinc, low detergent, kind of like the old days. The guys, mm -hmm. you know, my dad was an NASCAR guy and we used to break in engines straight 30 weight, non detergent. Well, it had nothing to do with being straight 30 weight. It was all about being non detergent. And these braking oils are high zinc. So they have the right additive package to protect the cams, lifters, to get the rings to break in, but it's low detergent in order to make that stuff work and function properly. So the process in doing it, if I go ahead and I, this is my initial fill on the engine, um, number one, I want to get your, your feedback on how to break in the engine, but how long do I leave this oil in before I switch it? All right, so I have to qualify this statement. Okay. As a certified lubrication specialist, a turbologist by training okay. and in practice, I try to do everything 100% best right way. Okay. Not the cheapest way, <laughs> the best way for the engine. Because my perspective is engine parts are expensive, oil is cheap. So my recommended procedure, what we do when we are breaking in our test engines, and we actually own a fleet of engines. We have several mm. engines we use to do testing. We do a 20 minute break in at 2,500 RPM. Okay. And then we drain the oil and change the filter. And the reason for that is not because the oil is bad, it's because the oil is dirty. Mm. There's 10 times more wear on an engine in the first hour of its life than the next 10 hours combined. Mm. So all of that particulate matter that's in the oil is actually not being captured 100% by the filter. Mm. So what I wanna do is I wanna get all that particulate matter out of the engine. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do it is to drain the oil. So by changing the oil, putting a new filter on, you refill it with braking oil because the ring bedding in, the rest mm -hmm. of that stuff isn't done yet. So then you go back to braking oil and then, you know, if it's a race motor that's gonna be dynoed, you know, do all your dyno tuning on the braking oil. We offer various viscosity so you get the right viscosity for your bearing clearance. Mm -hmm. That way you don't have to worry about it. You can flog it as hard as you want to. It'll be fine. Then drain it out. If it's a street strip kind of car, four or 500 miles and then drain it out. Okay, so we're both proponents of a rebuilt engine, a built racing engine, hitting it hard from the start. But we, you know, we wrote the article and we got lots of emails in and people saying, well, I read the owner's manual and on my new car, it says to take it easy and baby it. Tell us about that. So we do some consulting work for a couple of different big OEMs. And I can tell you for a fact that one of them, every engine they build runs for seven minutes at wide open throttle on the assembly line. <laughs> So, and they have a special braking oil they use because engine plants are not the car manufacturing plants. Mm, mm. So the engine plant builds the engine at the end of the assembly line, they fill it with braking oil, they run it wide open throttle for seven minutes, they drain the braking oil out, they ship it to the car plant where they then put the, you know, factory fill oil in, which is different than the oil you buy off the parts store shelf, by the way this design for fuel economy and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So it's, it is different in that regard. It is different. So folks, if you're out there and you have a brand new vehicle, what should you do? 
I will tell you to do exactly what I did when my wife bought a new vehicle a few years ago. Go 500 miles and drain the factory fill oil. Because again, it's still breaking in. Even though they got the first drain done in the factory, you still don't want to go more than 500 miles before changing the oil. And then go, if it's a street car that's bone stock, mm -hmm. just go to your owner's manual. Look up what spec it calls for. Get that spec, that viscosity, refill it with your brand of choice, and, and go from there. Okay. So and you hit on it, you know, different types of engines, different break-in procedures are going to dictate how often you, or how long you leave the oil in there Correct. and when you change it. Now, the question is, what is the best procedure? Is it better to put the engine under higher load? Is it better to put the engine under light load? What's the best way to break it in? High load. If you baby the engine, you will destroy the engine. Cylinder pressure is what seats the rings. ZDP, the zinc additive that we all know, takes heat and load for it to activate. So if the engine is only driven at low RPM, under low loads, for short trips, the ZDP never gets to fully activate. You're never going to get a full break-in. The engine will probably end up consuming more oil in the end, and it won't work as well. Mm. And for my days in NASCAR, we would build 300-plus engines a year. All those engines, that same 20 minute, 2500 RPM initial run, change the oil, 7000 RPM, <laughs> full load first hit, right off the go. Every engine ran on the dyno harder than it probably would at the racetrack initially mm -hmm. for the first hour of its life. If the engine's built right, the tip clearances, the tolerances mm -hmm. are all done right, it's going to be fine. So don't baby the engine. Thanks for asking that question. We get it all the time. <laughs> Okay, so I agree with you 100%. You know, we did the test on the dyno, and what we actually did is, you know, a lot of people don't know when is the engine broken in. I mm -hmm. mean, it's, it's a great question. So we said, well, how can we possibly measure? We did a leak down test. Mm -hmm. We also did dyno testing and actually looked at the dynos, and what we saw is pass after pass, we saw the ring seal was getting better, so the horsepower was going up. Uh -huh. And we just kept going, kept going, until we kind of plateaued and it wasn't making more horsepower. Did a few more runs to make sure that everything was broken in. And essentially, we ended up with a broken in engine and knowing it was broken in. Exactly, that's the exact way to do it. When, when the engine stops gaining power, the rings are bedded in. And like you said, the best thing to do, a couple more hits just to make sure everything is good. At that point, drain the oil out. Always drain the oil while it's hot, by the way. If you change the oil cold, you're really not changing the oil. You know, there's a lot of oil left over an engine, especially a flat engine. It's really hard to drain it all out. Mm. So change the oil while it's hot. Yeah, I know it burns your fingers and all that kind of stuff. Trust me, I've lived it my whole life. <laughs> but it does help get more of the oil out, get the contaminants out. So it's all about trying to make the engine work its best and live as long as possible. Okay, so if you want all the details of this, click on the links below. We've got the full article, lots of data, so that you guys can understand this and you can actually even see the dyno results. So thanks for the information on braking oils. Now, people who want to know more about what's going on in their engine, engine oil analysis, that's an option. What's your opinion on it? It's the only way to know the health of the engine without having to take it apart. So in other segments, engine oil analysis is just, it's very common. You know, you go out and you and you buy a used boat. Uh, typically, the survey and stuff, they're gonna send out the engine oil in there and get it analyzed to see what's going on in that. And it's not in automotive, but it is in some other fields. If you've ever flown on an airplane and landed successfully, you can thank used oil analysis for that. The aviation industry pioneered it. Mm. That's how they know when to do maintenance on jet engines is because the engine oil, be it, it you know a gasoline engine, mm. a turbine engine, or whatever kind of engine it is, it's the lifeblood. Mm. And just like if you're sick, you go to the doctor, what do they do? They take your blood to find out what's going on inside mm. of you before they do cut you, cut you open. And so the used oil analysis allows you to peek inside the engine mm. to know things like, hey, we talked about before about the bearing wear. Okay. Well, how do you know before the, there's a hole in the side of the engine? Well, you can know through the used oil analysis because the copper, tin, and lead in that bearing will show up in the oil sample. So it's really important to do used oil analysis, especially on high value, high priority vehicles like a race engine. I mean. Every Formula One team mm. actually does used oil analysis at the racetrack. 
Oh, really? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, just a few months ago, I got to go visit Renault, Formula One, and mm -hmm. McLaren, mm -hmm. and both of them said, oh, yeah, we have a guy who, just like you, who's a certified lubrication specialist mm -hmm. that goes to the racetrack with us, and they had the lab equipment at the racetrack, and they're sampling the oil right there, real time, trending the data to know. So right. it's the only way to really know the health of the equipment. Now, I will say one thing, you know, maybe a lot of guys may be using some of the, the bigger labs that are out there. Most of those labs are basically designed to handle aviation and aerospace mm -hmm. and, you know, industrial applications. Race engines are very different. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about, you know, a Skyline, an engine that's got, you know, a plasma bore or an engine that's got an Alucil mm -hmm. bore. Those are different. Mm -hmm. Turbine engines don't have that. Diesel engines don't have that. So the wear sickness is very different. So be very selective in your choice of lab because that report is typically what people go off and it could give you the wrong information because it's not mm -hmm. dialed in to these unique applications. Gotcha. So it would seem like if you're interested in doing some engine oil analysis, there's no better time than the present to start. Exactly. Like on the break-in side, we talked about it, there's more wear during break-in than any time in the engine's life. So guess what? That break-in oil analysis sample is going to set the high water mark mm -hmm. for the amount of wear that will occur for your engine. As opposed to that generic diesel standard, mm -hmm. now you have what's the high water mark for your engine. So now you can know if you ever reach, say, 17 ppm aluminum during break-in, if you ever see that ever again, there's a problem. Gotcha, gotcha. And it's also a good way to, to indicate if you make a change, right? If you change a, a type of oil that you're using or make some other change to the vehicle or change your service interval uh, even, you could see if that's affecting it. Exactly. You know, what's very common in, in motorsports and especially, you know, grassroots motorsports and individuals is that, you know, we kind of look at engines as kind of pass-fail. If either the engine blew up or it didn't. If it didn't blow up, well, you kind of assume, well, I must have done things right. Well, the Problem with that logic is it's kind of like saying, hey, I passed the test in school, therefore I must have made an A. <laughs> well, maybe not. You might be a D student and just don't know it. So what the engine oil analysis gives you is that ability to see in that spectrum, you know, am I making progress or am I losing ground? Mm -hmm. So yes, if I change tune-up, if I change oil, whatever change I make, am I getting better or am I getting worse? It gives you that finite analysis that you don't have based on, well, it didn't blow up, must be okay. Well, so right now we don't have an article on this yet on D Sport Mag, but uh, check out the links below here because we're probably going to have one soon.